Okay, well, we all know that Valentine's is coming up and it's just around the corner. And many of us will be getting some pretty expensive items. And when you have something that you cherish, it's really important that you learn how to protect that item because you never know. The unfortunate may happen. And then what happens to that, that item that you really cherish? So here to help us, we have in studio, we have sales and operations manager at Cliff Cottom Insurance Services and Seba. So, and Valentine's Day, jewelry happens to be a very popular gift. Some people may be fortunate enough to really get something of some pretty significant value. And you want to make sure that that's protected because, let's, let's face it, we just saw a story in the news about someone losing their wedding ring, right, down the drain. What do we do to make sure that we are protecting these gifts that come from the heart? Well, you want to check with your homeowner's insurance because they do offer some coverages that you can have for, for those items to make sure they're covered for things like theft or if you lose them. Okay. And I think a lot of people, though, they just assume that their homeowner's insurance does cover all of it, but is that necessarily the case? No. They usually only give limits. Um, most insurance companies give about a $1,500 limit per item. I've seen some of them go up to about $2,500. Mm -hmm. So if your items are valued over that, then you want to talk to your insurance agent about adding the coverages on and scheduling it onto your property. Okay, so um, can you define a little further though, because you said scheduling you know, those items onto your policy. So what does that mean? So it means you are telling the insurance company what specific item is being covered, not just a general item. Most of our personal property, like TVs and couches and things like that, it's just general, whatever you have. Okay. But when it has a specific value, you provide an appraisal and it gives a description of the item and a dollar amount to the item and then you add it onto the policy. And what it does is it covers things for theft and then it also covers for mysterious disappearance, which is really important with jewelry. Okay, and what about items though that have like really significant sentimental value and maybe they're kind of one of a kind. So while you may have an appraiser say it costs this, but in reality you truly can't replace it. So can you adjust that into what you feel the cost is or does it actually have to be the monetary value? It does have to be the monetary value that's on there. We have to be able to figure out if that item is lost or stolen, how would you replace it? So okay. uh, to as like as possible. All right. So to as like as possible. Correct. And obviously we're, we're discussing jewelry a lot right now because well, it's around the corner. A lot of people will be getting rings, necklaces, earrings. Um, but we also have items in our homes that are of value like computers. Uh, there might be people watching that have uh, large collections of items. Mm -hmm. uh, what do we do with those items? Is it a very similar process? Very similar. Okay. A lot of times insurance companies, if it's a recent purchase, you can provide a receipt or okay. an appraisal for any of those. Computers have specific limits, uh, fine arts, antiques, any collectibles, uh, silver, things like that. You always want to check and make sure that you're adequate, adequately covered. And um, how important is it to take pictures of these items? Is that is that important with your insurance policy to have physical evidence of what it was and what it looked like? The insurance company may or may not require, okay. it, require it if you schedule it. However, it's always good if you have a loss to have those reminders so you remember exactly what you had so you, okay. can, you can claim it. So more proof always better. Absolutely. Right? Okay. And um, what do we do now as people are watching and they're like, oh my goodness, I just got something for so-and-so or I inherited this item and I do not have this covered. What's the first step they need to do to make sure that they're taking the proper action to protect that item? Probably either getting an appraisal or using that receipt and then give your agent a call or give us a call. Okay, so make sure you do call an appraiser then if it's something that you inherited, which obviously did not come with a, a receipt when you got it from your grandmother. Exactly. You do need to have that appraiser give an actual value so you can apply that to your insurance. That's correct. Okay, and where do people go so they can learn more about the services that you provide at Cliff Cottom Insurance Services? Best to go to our website at CCIS. CA.com. Wonderful. And thank you so much. Thank you. Great. The following interview involves commercial content. The products and services featured appear as paid advertising.